Please think before you answer. Think carefully. Now I've seen things in the papers, pictures, you and the house and that woman I mean. Oh, I've stopped bringing them into the house. I don't buy the newspapers anymore. But he sees them in the shops. People say things. You know how it is. He's upset, naturally, by what he hears and sees. They're both confused. So I got some advice. Now was crying himself to sleep, it had become quite difficult. And Daisy was behaving as if nothing had happened at all, as if she was just taking it all in her stride like she does. I brought them to see someone, a psychologist. I know you won't like that, but I don't have the same distrust of these people that you do. He thinks that it could be good for them to see you and to know that you're well, safe. You see, Nat's been drawing pictures of you with big black stripes, the bars we think, and men with things in their hands, and he's been asking if the guards have guns or sticks. He means batons. Oh, I didn't know what to say, but maybe if he saw you in the prison, then he'd be reassured. No, not in prison. Not now. Not like this. I think about the children often, several times a day. I understand why they tell you to live in the present, but there I am in the present, a witness in the box giving evidence, me taking notes as I do, and bam, I see Nat and Daisy. Or I'm in the van on the way back to prison and I see some kids playing in the streets near Stony Batter and I swear, I'm looking to see if Nat's there among his friends. At night, you see, I can imagine that they were getting on with life that Alice was there protecting them, that they were better off. Perhaps if I came to see you first, we could discuss how it might work, agree what might be best. Locke and Hager, do you remember him, my solicitor? He said that it might be possible to arrange a meeting in a nice room in a welfare office or something. Oh, I don't know about these things. He said that you could talk to the welfare officer. Oh, I can't think of anything else to say. Please take a little time to think about this request. I know your first reaction is going to be Jack, and I can understand that, but please, please try to see us what's best for the children. Love, Alice. She underlines one please. It's the little things that, <clears throat> it's the little things like that I'm letting her do it. It was the please she chose to underline, not what is best for the children. The please, her pleading, almost begging. When did I ever make her beg? Christ, it was like one of those reflections, not in a mirror, that's too clear, too literal, but on some shiny surface like a, a kettle or a window. I know what your first reaction would be. His first touch let him down. That's how the sports commentator might put it. The chaplain asked me to look in on you, the officer said. He said you were still concerned about a letter you received. To be honest, I almost forgot till I saw you standing alone. I denied I was upset by a letter. I didn't think he'd believe me. The people in the door opened and closed every half hour during the night, for as long as I was awake anyway. It must have been special. They felt I was, risk I was a risk to myself. <clears throat> the visit was to be a short one, to give it every chance of success. The prison welfare person said that it should be as child-centred as possible. I didn't quite know what she meant. Yeah, I could hardly take them on a tour of the prison and introduce them to my mates. Not that I had any. There was no playground or ball pond like the one in Hatfield shopping mall we used to visit. She said that she would organise some sweets and drinks and toys for the kids to play with. And she showed me the room we could choose. It was a normal room with soft furniture and Venetian blinds, which are like bars only just going in a different direction. She asked me to focus on the purpose of the visit purpose of the visit. She looked at me blankly for a moment or two, waiting for me to respond. I didn't know what to say. I haven't seen them in nearly two months, I ventured. Of course it's for you to see your children, but I'd like you to remember that they want to make sure that you're all right. Do you understand? That's what everybody's telling me. Right, I'll tell them I'm okay. It's in a few days, so you have time to plan what you're going to say to them. I can't tell them where I, that I'm here, why I'm here. You might consider preparing a few white lines, so they don't leave here worried about you. But I'll leave that to you. White lines? It's always a problem when people are remanded in custody. They're not guilty, and yet they are locked up and away from their families. What, 
do you suggest, I say? It went on in this vein, but I got the message. I planned to be upbeat and cheery, telling the children that I had some work to sort out in Dublin, and that I'd be here for a while, that the food is great and so on. Nat was young enough to buy all that, and Daisy probably wouldn't notice very much. I visualised myself sitting on the floor playing whatever games were available. Turned out all wrong. My tiredness and irritability were made worse by the waiting and being brought down late for the visit. Daisy clung to Alice and didn't loosen out for the entire, entire hour. Nat just wanted to run around the room with a toy tractor he brought. I could see that he wanted to stop and maybe do something with me by the way he kept looking at me out of the corner of his eye, but I couldn't find, seem to find a way to engage with him. Drinks were knocked over and cake was mushed into the floor. Nat threw the tractor at me when I wasn't expecting it. It caught me on the forehead above my left eye. Maybe he meant it. Perhaps if you just sat and let him come to you. What? Stop chasing him. It's only winding him up more for God's sake. I nearly lost it. With everything going on and the, the tension in my chest was just fit to explode with anxiety. I flopped into an easy chair and must have looked nothing like the picture of control and togetherness I'd hoped to portray. A screw walked in and began to talk to Alice. He took a biscuit and poured himself a paper cup of orange juice that was meant for the kids. I didn't realise at first why he would do such a thing and why I felt so angry about it. The welfare officer called him out but he was in no hurry to leave. I could see that she was fuming. He drew a deep inhalation of smoke, stuffed out his cigarette on a saucer, emptied his lungs in a long cloud of breath towards the ceiling and said to me that he'd wait for me outside. I was the boy in the head brother's office again. Alice, recognising the failure of the visit, stood, said that it was time to go and asked the children to say goodbye to me. It was a signal for Daisy to cling once more to her leg, managing to say a thank goodbye without making eye contact with me. I turned to see Nat. He was kneeling on a chair by the window. Several horizontal slats of the Venetian blinds pulled together and held with his hand so that he could stare at the prison buildings. Across the room and sat beside him. He asked me if the guards had guns. Are you a prisoner, Teddy? Are you in prison? So matter of fact.